Yo, what's good? It's your boy, Lo, man. Listen, I am watching a lot of information about what's going on in Israel right now. And I'm not going to hold you, man. Like, I really don't have a lot of insight into what all of the conflict is or just the history of it. I've heard it in church, little pieces and bits about this land, this place over here um, with Jerusalem. And you hear it and we talk about it. We know you know, the story of Jesus, baby Jesus, and all these things like that, um, with Bethlehem and all these things. But um, we don't know a whole, whole lot about everything else. And I just wanted to get down into it. I just wanted to find out, like, what is it um, that I can learn? So when I am curious about something, I typically want to know how can I educate myself. So I wanted to bring you guys in. I just wanted to Watch this video. I found this video on YouTube. I'm looking at it here on this on my big screen. Uh, and it's about the history of the Israel Israel Palestine conflict. Now, once again, I am I am a student seeking knowledge and learning. So I hopefully this um, I don't even know now you gotta be careful. That's the thing too, because you never know who is actually telling the complete truth. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, you may see more of these where I'm finding information and I'm learning. Um, but I do have questions. I have things that I want to know more about. I want to know, you know, the impact that this is having on the global sc scope of things. And, yeah, we'll, we'll get into some more of those conversations along the way. But for, one, for right now, this is me inviting you to learn a little bit with me about the Israel and Palestine conflict. So um, let's get into that. Um, this is it on YouTube. Let me get me on here because I want you to be able to see my reactions and thoughts. And let's, uh, let's get into it. Israel, the world's only Jewish state, located east of the Mediterranean Sea, and Palestine, the territory of the Arab population that hails from the Israel-controlled land, have long been known for their enduring conflict with the Israeli occupation of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. The tension between Israel and Palestine has been deteriorating in years, climaxing with many violent clashes between the two sides. To understand the root of the Israel-Palestine conflict, we have to look back a few thousand years years ago. Early History of Israeli-Palestinian Conflict In the 17th centuries BC, following the call of God, three patriarchs of the Jewish people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, settled in Canaan, a region approximating present-day Israel, the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip, parts of Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan. The region later had the name the Land of Israel, the Promised Land, the Palestine region, or the Holy Land. In 1000 BC, King... All right, so I want to I wanna hop in real quick. We're like a minute into this already. So I grew up in church, and I'm going to see if I can get this off. Okay, so in this scope of right here, we all understand the story of Moses and the the Israelites going back to the land that was promised or go, went to a land that was promised to them. Um, if I'm remembering fully co correct, they were in Egypt, Africa, so to speak. Um, Egypt is its own. I, man, matter of fact, I don't even want to get into that. I'm just sharing what I know. Um, I was taught. So I was taught that Egypt... Um, and when we we normally identify Egypt as an African country, but they were enslaved in Egypt and then they there was the mass exodus. Right. So you got in the books of the Bible, there's Genesis. Then you have Exodus. Exodus is the story or the, the documentation of their leaving Egypt to the promised land. Moses is directing the ship. He's leading everybody out. He and his brother and his sister and some other leaders, they get to Mount Sinai, all these things where he goes out. Um, and this is what we were, what you're seeing right here um, is what we're 
referring to as the land of promise that was flowing with milk and honey, so to speak, which means that it had resources. So I just wanted to interject that real quick, that that's the biblical tie when you if you're following this also from the Bible's depiction. Saul established the Israelite monarchy, which then was ruled by King David, who made Jerusalem the capital of his kingdom, and his son, King Solomon, who built the first temple in Jerusalem. After the death of King Solomon, the united monarchy was split into the kingdom of Israel in the north, with Samaria as the capital, and the kingdom of Judah in the south, with Jerusalem as the capital. Now, I got to hop back in real quick, because this is also following biblical. Now, he's doing the, this is... He's following the biblical, but I don't know if he's following the King James version or if he has a Jewish background or where he would be following the original scripts of what these books were. Um, because the Bible is a culmination of 66 books um, that were written by various people. Now, if you look at this, now that one body of the promised land is now severed into it shows two, but I'm curious about these little blue areas that seem to not be inclusive in this segregation of the property or the land. Now you can also remember that the Sumerians in the Bible always seem to have conflict with like the Israelites or the other I, it's weird because they were all family at one point and now they kind of they're starting to segregate and be different the land became home to a majority of Jews but then it was subject to numerous conquests of various groups leading to the significant decrease of the Jewish population on the land one of these conquests was conducted by the Roman Empire, who gave the name Palestine to Judah, intending to break the Jewish connection with the land of Israel. During this time, Christianity, which started as a Jewish sect, ultimately became a dominant religion toward the end of the Roman Empire. Okay, I don't know if y'all caught that, but he just said that Christianity started out as a Jewish sect which means that it was a section of Jewish belief. So they took some of the Jewish belief and created Christianity where it became Christ focused, right? Which is you, that's a whole nother conversation out of my depths. I'm just sharing with y'all my understanding of things that I've been taught over time. But if humans are involved, everything is fallible. Everything has some inconsistencies. And if you were not there and you did not see it for yourself, you're just really kind of taking it at the, the scope of somebody hopefully giving a as accurate depiction of what has happened over time, right? In the seventh century came an Arab conquest, beginning the spread of Islam. The Dome of the Rock was built on the ruin of the second temple, making Jerusalem the holy city to three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. After Christians in Jerusalem were intensely persecuted by the Seljuk Turks, a Central Asian empire with ambition to expand its territory, Christians in Europe launched several crusades to bring the holy city back to the hand. Now, I want to stop right here because this is wild. This dude is saying that the Arab Turks or whatnot, the Arab nation. All of, yeah, I'm, man, I have so many questions because. To my understanding, even in this point, there is no such thing as the Middle East. You hear how they're talking about this land and even here, you can see the boot of Italy. All of this area is still being navigated and controlled. What makes it more interesting to me is when you look at this, how is it that this piece of land, everything around it is yellow? How did they secure 
that one piece of land and not it wasn't taken over like did the arabs just not want it like i'm confused like it's so confusing because this is the 11th century y'all navigated all the way up look at this yellow they navigated all the way up to the boot of italy but left jerusalem and israel alone let's continue of the christians during this time, many Jews were killed. Others were making pilgrimages everywhere, mostly in Western Europe. From the 16th century to World War I, the Holy Land, along with much of the Middle East, was ruled by the Ottoman Empire, an Islamic superpower. The land was unofficially called Palestine. At the same time in Europe, more and more Jews were joining a movement called Zionism, aiming to create a Jewish national state in its ancient homeland. Hence. Now, you, f you hear this term. Let me cut back for a second. So you hear this term, Zion. And apparently Zion meant the return of Jewish people or, or these people of promise to the promised land. Even Lauren Hill has this song um, about Zion. Now the joy of my world... She named her son about Zion, but Zion, let's look this up. Let's look it up real quick because I, 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 I like to be thorough. What does Zion mean? First, let's see what Zionism means, right? Uh, series pulling this up. Okay, he's not giving me... Um, no, I do not want Zion Williamson. Um, Zion, let's see. Let's see what this dictionary version of it says. Zion. Right, it is doing the most. All right. Zion. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, just open it. Just no. Just open the definition, bro. Thank you. Zion is the hill of Jerusalem, on which the city of David was built. Gotcha. In Christian thought, the heavenly city. Or kingdom of heaven. Now another. Because this. All of these definitions matter. Another definition. It has among. Rastafarians. To be called. Africa. And if you don't know what Rastafarians are. Um, I'm, I don't want to jack that up either. But I know it has to do with the affiliation of Jamaican culture. So they Zionism, um, I guess, became a plight where people wanted to return to the heavenly city. OK. Let's continue. In the first decade of the 20th century, tens of thousands of Jews moved from Europe back to the region. Yeah. To Jerusalem area. All right, you can't talk about fifty years in hip hop. All right, so we're gonna let that we're gonna let that go through. While that's doing that, I'm gonna skip that. All Israel right. and Palestine under the British rule. So World War One exploded. So now we're switching. He switched gears to where there's the return of. Um, hold on, where am I at? Now there's the return of um the jews to their homeland um they're living there but they do not fully have control i'm taking and now we're seeing um israel and palestine under british rule 
and ended with the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Its land in the Middle East was carved by the British and French empires. The British then gave more independence for Iraq and Jordan, and the region remaining under the control of Britain was what it called the British Mandate for Palestine, where Britain promised to establish a Jewish national homeland under its Balfour Declaration, which went into effect in 1923. Tensions between the Jews and the Arabs that was who both years the land grew, which even led to acts of violence. By the 1930s, following the increasing Jewish population in Palestine due to the fear of persecution during the Nazi reign in Germany, the British limited Jewish immigration. In response, the Jewish militias formed to both fight the Arabs and resist the British rule. Then came the Holocaust throughout Nazi Germany, which claimed almost 6 million Jewish lives. After the war, more and more Jews then fled from Europe to Palestine to seek a homeland, escalating the tension with the Arabs. Overwhelmed by the situation, Britain began to withdraw from the region. The birth of the Israel state. Okay, so that 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 was a he skated through that, but that was huge. So during the time of the Holocaust, the Holocaust where the Nazis uh, Germany was doing a lot of the the cleansing of Jews for I, and I don't that's a whole nother story I'm, you got to look and do your research there but they came back to Palestine and it was called Palestine because British rule if we remember in the origin beginning of this was trying to make a I think they said they were trying to declare it a Jewish state. So, in my understanding, according to this, Israel was not seen as a investment for British in rule, or they weren't really rocking with the Israel side. They were rocking more with the Palestinian side and were funding that. But then you started getting the Arabs who remained in Palestine and who was fighting the Jews. Then British control tried to stop Jews from coming into the land. And then the uh, Jews start fighting the Brits as well as the Arabs. And then that's when the Holocaust hits. Everybody's like, yo, we're going to try to get back home because like we all know what Hitler did in that reign. And they was trying to seek asylum back in their homeland. And then it got to the point where so many of them were coming in. The Brits just washed their hands of it. And now um, you have the British influence removed. And now it is Arabs and Jews going back and forth at, on, at this point. That's a lot. After World War II, the UN proposed a plan to partition Palestine into two independent states, a Jewish state and an Arab state, with the city of Jerusalem becoming an international zone with a special status. However, the plan according to which the Jewish, accounting for only one-third of the population, was granted more territory, 56.5% of the land, was rejected by the Arabs. They began to form volunteer armies throughout Palestine. Less than one year after that, as Britain completed its withdrawal from Palestine, Israel declared itself an independent state, marking a new, bloodier chapter in the struggle between the Jews and the Palestinian Arabs. To the ones who give it. All right, so let's talk. Whoa, <laughs> boy, they they really, they they, hey man, this is, this is this is getting tricky, brother. This is getting tricky. So let's talk about this. So now British control is out of the way. They leave completely. But you got residents of Palestine that was what the original state was declared by the British. You got these Arabs that have moved in and they don't want to move out. But then the Jewish people named Israel. So now the name Israel is back on the board. They're declaring Israel a Jewish entity and land. And now we're having conflict. We're fighting again. 
who really owns it. So, and then the area that they are claiming is not the original area that they were given or they split in the beginning because Judah, um, I, I believe if I'm remembering this correct, was what Palestine was initially seated as. It was split. You had Israel, then you had the land of Judah that was seen as Palestine. Um, and I maybe we go back and look at this, but I, I I remember that seems to be what I remember it being. But now, either way, you have the Arabs that are in Palestine fighting the Jewish um, community. Israeli war. Right after the announcement of an independent Israel, a war between the Arabs and the Jews broke out, which was known as the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. The war involved five recently independent Arab nations, Egypt, Jordan, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon, the Arab League, who invaded the region in an attempt to establish a unified Arab Palestine. However, a ceasefire agreement was reached a year later in which more than two-thirds of historic Palestine, including the West Jerusalem, belonged to Israel, while Jordan occupied East Jerusalem and the area known as the West Bank, and Egypt occupied the Gaza Strip. As a result, more than 750,000 Palestinians were expelled from the land where they lived for centuries on the day that they call Al-Nakba, or the Catastrophe. With the deteriorated dispute between the Jews and the Arabs, there came more wars and fighting in the following decades. The 60-Day War It was in 1967 when the 60-Day War broke out after a volatile period of diplomatic friction and skirmishes between Israel and its neighboring Arab states, Jordan, Syria, and Egypt. This brief war ended with the victory of Israel, giving Israel control over the Golan Heights from Syria, the West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan, and Gaza and the Sinai Peninsula from Egypt. Sinai was later returned to Egypt under the Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty. After the war, most Palestinian refugees and their descendants were not allowed to return to their homes, but had to live in Gaza, the West Bank, and neighboring Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. The First Intifada and the Oslo Accord. Hold on, y'all. He he said that very... We're not allowed to return to no, Egypt. No, we, we need... Sinai yeah. was later returned to Egypt on... Let's, let's, let's go back. ...the Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty. After the war, most Palestinian refugees and their descendants were not allowed to return to their homes. So now, all of this has transpired. The 60-day war comes. Israel prevails. And now Israel has the, and he goes through this, but he doesn't say how they gain control because you're fighting six, and these are not small countries. These are not, like, by no means are these small countries. Um, they gain control. Somebody had to be helping. Somebody had to be backing. Whatever the case is, they gain control. And now the Palestinians are the minorities in control or, or are the minorities in play? And now they cannot return home, but they have to live in these select areas. They had to live in Gaza, the West Bank and neighboring Jordan. Remember Syria, Gaza because Lebanon. Gaza is big right now. The first Intifada and the Oslo Accords. At home. Now. Why that's doing that, they keep throwing these ads up. But it's so it's so unique about how all of this is transpiring when I initially and I guess I used to wonder part of one of my questions that I was wondering was if they were all family, then why are they fighting? Because some people are misdirecting and not being clear on the 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 conflict between parties. Now, according to this, what we see as fighting is not the Jewish community, so to speak. It's the Palestinian Arabs 
that they are fighting against who want to regain control. Um, a lot of them are living or have been forced to live now in Gaza, Lebanon, and some of these other little areas. We saw that. Um, but now let's, we're starting to get into a little more current timeline. And I'm curious about this because um, this land and who controls it and who has owned it has been very, it's, it's a circle wheel, man. It's man. Yeah. I, I, it's all of this is so interesting to me. in the Palestinian territories in the let's go back I missed a little bit I'm sorry y'all let's see let me there we go let's start here Jordan Syria and Lebanon the first intifada and the Oslo Accords the rising number of Israelis settling in the Palestinian territories in the West Bank and Gaza gave rise to the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, first founded in Cairo, Egypt in 1964 to create a liberated Palestine in Israel. The PLO launched attacks on Israel from its base in Jordan. It was then forced to move from Jordan to Lebanon, starting to carry out acts of terrorism against Israel. Fighting went on for years, including the Israeli invasion of Lebanon to kick the PLO out of Beirut. The PLO eventually agreed to divide the land between Palestine and Israel, but there were still more and more Jewish settlers moved into the Israel-occupied Palestinian territories. In 1987, a violent Palestinian uprising... Whoa, 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 whoa. So the PLO starts making all this chaos, right? And they go to war with Israel. And because they go to war with Israel, Israel starts to fight back and they move from Jordan to Lebanon. And then Israel invades Lebanon to kick them out. But during the moment of them kicking them out, Israel barters a deal with them to split the land where the Palestinians have their land and the Jews or the Israelite, Israel, uh, Jewish community in Israel uh, will have their land. But then you start to see more Jewish people moving into the land of the Palestinians is what he's saying. In Cairo, Egypt in 1964 to create a liberated Palestine in Israel. The PLO launched attacks they on go to Israel Jordan, from its base in Jordan. Fighting. It was then forced to move from Jordan to Lebanon, starting to carry out acts of terrorism against Israel. Okay. Fighting went on for years, including the Israeli invasion of Lebanon to kick the PLO out of Beirut. The PLO eventually agreed to divide the, the area. land between Palestine Become and Israel. But there were still more and more Jewish settlers moved into the Israel-occupied Palestinian Now, if I'm correct in this geography, the area that the Palestinians have looks like it's where Jerusalem is. But I could be wrong. Let's just, let's see. But it looks like where Jerusalem territories. is. In 1987, a violent Palestinian uprising was ignited, starting from the Jabalaya refugee camp after an Israeli Defense Forces truck collided with two Palestinian civilian vans, killing four of them. This was known as the First Intifada. This bloody conflict resulting in hundreds of deaths triggered a peace process with the signing of the Oslo Accords by Israel and the PLO, the Oslo I Accord signed in Washington, D.C., and the Oslo II Accord in Taba, Egypt. According to the Oslo Accords, the West Bank was divided into three areas. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why was it signed in D.C.? This is the first time you actually hear about America being involved in this conflict. Area A was exclusively controlled by the Palestinians. Area B was controlled by both the Palestinians and Israel. 
Area C was fully controlled by Israel. That's a lot of moving parts. The second intifada. Something else happened. Though further peace talks continued in 2000, the Israelis and Palestinians could not reach agreements on issues like the status of Jerusalem, rights of refugees, and the increased Jewish settlement in Palestinian lands. Ariel Sharon, a Jewish Israeli who would later become Israel's prime minister, visited the Temple Mount, home to the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. The action was deemed offensive by many Palestinians, and the second intifada broke out. The violence ended with Israel's withdrawal from Gaza, but continued to settle in the West Bank. Israel conflict with Hamas. I wonder why that would seem as disrespectful. Hamas so he, is a Sunni Islamist militant group I aiming is. to destroy the state of Israel and create an Islamic state. After the armed conflict between Hamas and Fatah, who managed the PLO, Hamas split from the Palestinian Authority and gained power in the Gaza. Israel put Gaza under a suffocating blockade, leading to several bloody wars between the two groups in the Gaza Strip, including Operation Cast Lead, Operation Pillar of Defense, and Operation Protective Edge. In 2014, Hamas and Fatah reached agreement to form a national unity government. In 2018, the U.S. Embassy was relocated from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, which was deemed by the Palestinians as a signal of American support for Jerusalem as Israel's capital. 2021, the conflict between Israel and Palestine was reassumed by a series of hostile events in East Jerusalem, leading to several acts of violence until a ceasefire deal brokered by Egypt, Qatar, and the United Nations came into effect on May 21st. Peaceful though it may seem now, the complex and long-lasting territorial dispute between two states is a ticking time bomb that can explode any time. And that's what we are seeing right now. This video was two years ago. I want y'all. I want y'all to see this. This video was two years ago. This dude was prophetic. He had the insight to know that this was not going to work. And now we see today where they are back at it. Now, I recently read where Israel just gave a 24-hour notice. The UN is still involved. I don't know what role the Amer like we are as America is playing in this, but clearly we have interest in Jerusalem. When we moved our embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, we pretty much was telling those people that Israel owns Jerusalem as their capital. Now, what's confusing and interesting to me somewhat is that Jerusalem has always been left out of a lot of this conflict where nobody has really just made it about Jerusalem. But clearly there's something about Jerusalem. And we know in the Bible, Jerusalem has always been a place that the Bible always speaks of very frequently. I don't, I want to gain more insight. I feel like this is giving me, and I probably need to watch it a few more times, but I feel like this is giving me a great, un, a better understanding of why the conflict is there. Now, I didn't know Hamas had taken over Gaza completely. Now, I understand why Israel would want to bomb it, but the problem is you have innocent people who are not doing the fighting. You have women, children that are living there. Even some men. You have elderly people. You have folks that are there that have nothing to do with the decisions to fight. But if they get blown up or with the bombing, they all have to suffer. I'm watching the story and I just I hate learning. I hate seeing things unfold that affect the world 
and not have an understanding about what's going on. I think this guy did a great job from what I gathered, not being cited on either, but just sharing the knowledge of what seems to be the history of this conflict. I would love to know your thoughts. Like, do you feel like it should just be left to the Jewish community? Like, should it just be an Israel or a Jewish state? Because some of you probably are thinking, like, why can't they just all live together and be okay? And because I think a lot of this has to do with it goes back to the beginning the religious beliefs. Some people are uh, Judaism, some people are Christian, and then some are Muslim. And they all believe differently. They all react differently to certain lifestyles and cultures. And then there's the notion of Zionism, where a lot of the Jewish uh, people in the world feel like they have the right to return home to their homeland and holy land. I don't know. I just wanted to share this. I'm learning. That's why I said this will probably be a video series where there's multiple things that go on that I'm talking about. Um, but nevertheless, I felt like this is something that I want to share with my audience because I didn't know. Like I'm I felt like I just was unaware. I have so many questions, so many things that I want to I want to learn about this because it's pretty much. Like the world is on pause somewhat with this. And I think it's good to know what's going on in time and history and be well versed. And I think some of you probably feel like me. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. I'm not here to debate. I have no skin in the game. I'm just someone who is always looking to understand the story behind things. So I'm asking for a little grace. I'm asking for a little bit of um, allow me to be a student to learn about this. This is not something in America that we we hear a lot about. Um, but I really would like to know, like, more about this story. And I would like to know what y'all think about what the resolution could be so that they can stop fighting. There's a lot of fighting going on. Ukraine, Russia, it's a lot of that um, in the world going on and conflicts. And we got to do better as humanity with our conflict. We got to do better with understanding how we can solve problems and not amplify them. Well, listen, I hope this was something useful and beneficial to you. And uh, yeah, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.